So hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now in this video I'm going to present to you the Peak Torque Big Brake Conversion for a 180mm disc. Who doesn't want a Peak Torque BBC in their hands? And I'm going to show you some of the design features I considered when designing it and making it. And uh, first of all, before you write down in the comments saying, I don't need a 180mm rotor, I can lock the brakes on my rim brake bike, I can lock the tyres on my disc brake bike with 140mm discs, yes. I absolutely agree. The brakes we have, whether it be rim brakes or disc brakes, mechanical disc brakes or hydro disc brakes, they are powerful enough. But I've always said when I've been using road discs since the kind of inception of road discs that the thermal side can't really cope with the heating powers that we get in road cycling. So it's not unusual to have six, seven, eight hundred watts steady state heating power in a disc brake on a road bike. Well, consider the road discs may weigh 100 grams, something like that. You can't cheat the physics. There's just not enough surface area or thermal mass to really deal with that heat. So we get warping issues with the disc brakes. We can't cool them quick enough, um, particularly when you consider the energy that you need to dissipate goes up with velocity squared. And you know if you're going 80 Ks down a hill and you're going to 20 Ks uh, for a hairpin on a long alpine descent, um, that V squared term is really bad and it gets worse obviously for heavier riders too, like myself. So I'm not making a 180 mil disc conversion for an increase in power. Yes, it'll increase the braking torque and force by about 12.5%. It's just a lever arm thing, it's just a gearing thing. But moreover, it'll increase the kind of thermal headroom that your brakes are going to have. So the maximum heat the brakes are going to see, the heat the brakes can lose, um, and that all comes back down to things like uh, disc life and pad life as well. So when you consider, okay, the force and torque of the brakes might go up by about 12.5% just because it's a bigger diameter, um, the main benefit is the thermal headroom and improvement on cooling, um, surface area, thermal mass, and that kind of goes up with R squared, which is area. So it's about, well, a 20 to 30% improvement um, if you go from 160 to a 180. You're obviously gonna need less um, surface pressure on the, the pads as well, so your pad and disc life goes up as well. Um, and yeah, it's just a fun little project. Now we saw Matej Mohoric use a 180mm disc on his bike in Milan San Remo. Now he won that race. Not saying he won because he had bigger brakes, but his Merida, um, I think it's the, the Aero bike, does actually accommodate 180mm discs. Um, or the fork of the aero bike can accommodate 180mm discs on that flat mount standard. So he took that fork and put it on his normal bike and was able to run a bigger disc brake. Apart from that bike, I don't know any other road bikes out there on the market that can by, like, by design accommodate a 180mm brake. Normally they are a 140 or a 160mm flat mount standard as set out by Shimano. The Gravel bike, I think Merida have, they have a 180mm disc brake on a gravel bike, and that's a bit odd for me, because I think gravel, the speeds are a lot lower. Um, you're not really bombing down really, really steep, fast hills on gravel. It tends to be a little bit flatter, a little bit lower, lower speed and more undulating hills. Now, I might be wrong, but um, Merida are the only kind of company pushing the 180mm uh, disc at the moment. And, but I certainly think it's a good option to have. Like, we've got all that space on the fork leg, why not? utilize it, why not offer you know, 140, 160, 180 if you really need it. So I've designed a little adapter. I've tried to keep it as slim line as possible, as kind of OEM looking as possible to add minimum weight and minimum kind of size. There's gonna be a small aerodynamic penalty for going to a slightly bigger brake. But if you're not so worried about that and if you're climbing hills all day, if you live in very hilly areas where you're quite heavy and you love bombing down descents, then a bigger front disc brake is just gonna last longer. Like I said, less heat, better life for the pads and the disc. So I'll take you through this, the installation of it. Now I've also gone through a, a, a load of prototypes with this um, to you know, try and make it as small as possible and, and neat looking as possible and, and safe as possible. Like, so I didn't want to detract from any safety. Now before you say, oh, I don't know if my fork or frame is gonna cope with a 180 mil disc or the extra power or torque. Well, like I said, the extra braking force only goes up about 12.5%. Whenever anything is built in engineering, whether it's in the bike industry or whatever, it's always supposed to be designed with a safety factor. So if your fork is gonna fail, if you increase the load by 12.5%, that's quite worrying. You know, a safety factor on a bike frame might be at least two, I would imagine three or four. So um, a 12.5% increase on the maximum braking force isn't really gonna worry it. And this comes back to the whole like power thing. I don't think you actually need the increase in braking force. It's more just 
Well, you're reducing that thermal problem, you're decreasing those maximum temperatures, you're decreasing the pad wear and the disc wear. But disclaimer, um, if, you know, if this breaks your fork or frame, not my problem, it's at your own risk. But I've designed it in a way, I should believe it's perfectly safe. Now, before we dive into the installation, um, the kit comes with four fasteners and two washers. Now you must use these fasteners, um, otherwise it just won't fit. The other thing is I would advise a low strength Loctite on all the fasteners. Um, that is present on the kind of stock Shimano caliper bolts normally to make them quite a, a, a tough fit in the threads um, to stop any vibrational problems. So I do recommend a low strength Loctite when installing this. This is a very important point. Before you kind of write to me and ask if you can get one of these, um, your frame has to be pretty good in terms of tolerances. So Shimano have a flat mount standard and they stipulate the pitch of the bolts between, you know, the cal where the caliper mounts is 70 millimeters. Now, because of the kind of packaging constraints of this and fitting everything underneath, you know, bolt heads, we've got counter bores in here and, and basically kind of custom hardware, um, the space is very limited to actually make this work um, in terms of the bolt spacing on the adapter. So the bolt pitch is 70 millimeters on the flat mount standard as laid out by the kind of Shimano frame building Bible. Now, your frame has to be pretty tight towards that. I have seen some frames out there where it's like 70.5 and then this is probably isn't gonna work because like I said, the constraints of the counter bores next to the threaded holes, um, I've had to be very tight on the kind of hole uh, position tolerance. Now, if your frame doesn't meet that standard Shimano requirement of 70 millimeters, um, this might not work. So I suggest you measure your bolt spacing pretty accurately first before trying to purchase one of these. It needs to be maximum, I reckon, 70.2, 70.3 um, in terms of the bolt pitch for the caliper on the fork leg. And that's about it. That's all you really need. The other thing you need is the standard uh, 160, 140 adapter that most bikes will have on them anyway. Uh, my mount actually utilizes that as well. Um, so you don't even need to take that off the caliper. That bolts to my mount and my mount bolts to the fork. First thing you want to do, obviously, is drop the wheel out. I'll loosen that to make it a little bit easier. Don't forget, these through axles should be done to 12. 12 to 15 newton meters. Um, now just take the caliper off and it's pretty simple. Now these bolts, these caliper bolts, normally have some sort of like Loctite on them. They're quite stiff normally, so I do advise using a low strength Loctite on my kit as well. You can just see the kind of Loctite on the end of the bolts, but we're not gonna use these bolts again. Keep them safe, obviously, but these are a very odd size. The M5 by like 13 and a half, they're not a standard size, and we're not gonna use these because they'll interfere with the fork when used with my adapter. So all the hardware that you need for my kit comes with the adapter, and I'll show you that now. Now, like I said previously, we actually utilize this part of the existing uh, 160mm adapter and that piggybacks onto my adapter. So just like the Shimano one, it tells you which way is up. Now, it's installed to the fork, the flat mount part of the fork with these fasteners. These are M5 by 12 Torx and they're low head Torx and they're low head for a reason because they won't fit if you use anything else. Now I picked Torx, you might think Torx is a bit annoying, but I picked Torx because if you pick a low head M5, a normal low head M5 socket head cap screw, um, if it's a low head, it'll come with a three mil hex. Now three mil hexes are very easy to round off um, and they're just not really like that usable in terms of longevity. So I went for the Torx option. It's a lot harder to round off a Torx, you get a much better bite. Um, and most multi-tools, cycling multi-tools will have a T25. So that's a T25. Um, Torx fitting. So we just sort of kind of nudge the caliper out the way, lock tight on that bolt. And this is where I'm, I'm talking about the uh, 70 millimeter tolerance between this and this it has to be pretty dead on because the hole position tolerance on this is critical for this to work because of the threads being so close together, so close to the counter balls of the uh, fixing bolt that if that um, clearance is out, then there's not enough space in the counter bores for the heads um, to actually line up. So you need to check that um, with a pair of calipers or some inspection equipment before you order this. But most frames should be fine. I've checked it on a few um, and they're all good. A Canyon, Cervelo, and this so far, and a Trek Madone. Um, and that, it'll all work with that. As long as your bike follows the Shimano flat mount standard, be good to go. Now you can see 
if I just spin the bars, the bosses needed to be molded into the fork right bang on a 70.00. I'd say you've got about 0.3 of um, kind of wiggle room there. So obviously, um, do those up nice and tight, six to eight newton meters. And then we put the caliper onto that and that's it. Now, like I said, we don't use the existing caliper bolts. You must not use the existing caliper bolts because they're too long for this adapter and they could go through and um, start biting into the fork. So I supply two M5 by 12 high tensile bolts, which are a normal four mil hex. Now, depending on your cable routing, you might need to kind of shove the cable up into the fork uh, a little bit. Sorry, not the cable, the hose. And then quite simply just get that in a few turns. Remember to use the washer, which I supplied, which is also kind of a black stainless washer to keep everything looking OEM. Put the bottom one in. Uh, and then obviously everything needs to be kind of realigned. Um, that needs to be torqued to six to eight newton meters again. Six to eight newton meters is not random. That actually comes from Shimano's requirement. So quite a long-winded video, just to recap, I'm not saying you need extra braking power, I'm just saying it's nicer to have a little bit of longer um, pad life, a little bit longer disc life, and the extra power there if you need it, if you're running really big tires and you can utilize the extra traction, then the 180 mil front disc um, really can help. So thanks for watching, uh, let me know if you want one, and my Instagram page is probably a very good place to send me a direct message. Um, I have got a limited number at the moment, but I've made a fair few, so uh, cheers, and I'll see you in the next one.